and welcome to the SCP Uncontained tutorial. Hopefully this guide will give you a good understanding of how to play. First, we're going to do a quick rundown of the core game mechanics and setup. To set up the game, designate a play area or site for each player. The site is made up of four zones, the uncontained zone, the contained zone, the personnel zone, and the civilian zone. Then, separate all the blue civilian cards out from the rest of the deck. They will be used to make the public pile. All other cards are to be placed in the draw pile. Cards from the draw pile are placed in the discard pile when discarded, while cards from the public pile are placed in the corpse pile. Before the game begins, every player needs to draw five civilians from the public pile. They must have exactly five. It doesn't matter which type, as long as the number adds up to five. So you're not allowed having any group civilians. The primary goal of the game is to contain anomalies. You do this by sacrificing an amount of civilian cards proportional to the class of the anomaly. For a green safe class, sacrifice one civilian. For a yellow Euclid class, sacrifice two. And for a red Keter, sacrifice three. Once you've sacrificed the right amount of civilians, you can move the anomaly to the contained zone. For anyone confused by the wording, sacrificing is essentially the same as discarding, although some cards treat them differently. Now, we're going to look at a sample turn. The first thing to do every turn is to resolve all start effects. Start effects are recognized by this icon, reminiscent of the play button. In the case of this player, they have two start effects to take care of. The player is allowed to choose what order they activate these effects. And in this situation, they decided to use the Laughing Man first, and then the Hanged King. The next phase is the draw phase, in which the player draws once from either pile. On this phase, the player chose to draw from the draw pile, receiving a character. They then must place it in their hand and continue to the next phase. If they had drawn an anomaly, they would have placed it in their uncontained zone. If they had drawn a scenario, they would have played it immediately. Now it's time for the action phase. The player can perform one of the following actions. They may draw from the public pile, contain an anomaly, play a hand character, or play an active character. This player decides to play their active character. Most active characters are played to the personnel zone, but some, like this one, are attached to other cards. This card remains attached to a chosen anomaly until it's removed by outside sources, such as Joe Schmo. Before we begin the end phase, you may notice that there are two anomalies that haven't been used yet, but only one has an end effect. This is because some anomalies have active abilities, this one here has the ability to increase the owner's civilian limit by two. Moving on to the end phase, we have one ability that can be activated. The end phase is symbolized by the stop button, which is seen on this anomaly. The player activates its ability and ends their turn. Now we're going to look and see how the game ends. First, we just need to fast forward time a little bit. Alright, we've just arrived at the end of the game. The game ends when the draw pile is empty. Players then count their points, which are awarded for contained anomalies and civilians. But be careful, because the uncontained anomalies will reduce points just as much as the contained ones raise it. Safe are worth 1 point, Euclids are 2, and Ketters are 3. Also, each civilian is worth 1 point. Now, let's just tally up the points for the other player and see who won. That's it for this tutorial. Make sure to check back for the next video, in which we'll be going into an in-depth look at every card in the core set.